Hi Trojans. So we're going to continue our series today on the 10 tips for student-centered learning in any classroom. And just as a reminder, um, all that student-centered learning means is that the student is at the center of the learning. So they're held a little bit more accountable. They're responsible for um, having a little bit more choices in their learning and the direction of their learning versus our teacher-centered learning model where the teacher is like in control of the knowledge and then distributes that knowledge to students. Now, either one can be okay. Um, I'm personally going more towards that student-centered learning and having more um, student empowerment in my classes and having, the, you know, drawing on the student expertise, the what they want to learn Kind of using that as a guide in my classroom. So we have covered um, student talk time and make time for play and today I want to talk about student voice. So this is different than student talk time where students are actively talking to one another. Student voice is giving that student input. So I like this quote from Andrew Miller that says voice and choice can allow students to explore their passions and feel honored for their ideas and their opinions. So really looking at ways we can get student input into the classroom. So a lot of ways that I do this in my classroom is for one, having semester reflections or quarter reflections, having them reflect on their work, what they liked, what they didn't like, how they can improve the classroom, what, um, what do they even want to learn or like how, what they want to study, I should say. Um, so really having them reflect, and I am a big advocate of student reflections, and we'll talk about this later in the series, but that's a great way of getting student input and having them buy in. Um, the other thing with that is making sure you actually act upon their input. So after they do reflections, I reflect those classes and I explicitly say in my classroom, based on your, like on the Google form results, I saw this, and so this is what we're going to do today, or... Um, really explicitly stating that in my classroom so that they know that I'm looking at it and that they know that I'm making those changes based on it. Um, the second thing that I do is that I started doing during distance learning and I've kept up with it um, right now, and that's a playlist. So at the beginning of the year, I'll have the students um, put on a Padlet um, any song recommendations or artist recommendations. Now, I definitely have to like go through because um, my definition of school appropriate and their definition of school appropriate can sometimes be very different. But this is a great activity and um, I've done it. Um, I've created Spotify playlists. This year I created a YouTube playlist that I can continue to add to it. And then I add to it all year. So as they give me more song suggestions, um, as they give me more input into it or like give me suggestions, I can add to the playlist all year long. And this is great because it's the music that I play when they walk into the room. If they're having free independent time, um, I'll play the music and the kid, like the students ask for it. They want to hear their music. They want to hear that. And it's one of the first things and easy things that I can do to really show that their voice matters in my classroom. So just having them control the music or like give me input. And then it's also a great way to see your class and kind of see the personalities of your classes. Um, I do this for like one playlist for all my classes for the year, but it's been a great to kind of see the choices um, for each, uh, each year that I've been made. Last year, I felt like I had a lot more rock and roll and like a classic, like classic rock music going on. This year, um, I have a lot more banda and like Mexican music, which is really cool. And so a lot of really it's just really cool to see kind of the personalities um, of each year as well. Um, but it's one of the best ways that I can get that student input and show that their voices and what their choices and like actually listen to what they're saying uh, matters. And I established that right from the beginning. Um, a couple of other things for student voice is just having them be part of the expectations. So these are examples from my breakout room expectations and camera norm expectations um, from last year. But um, really like thinking about like, you know, we struggled with like, should we have cameras on or cameras off? And I asked students like, what do they prefer? What do they need? And I had them um, get into groups and actually come up and have these discussions with them on their own. And then they have control over the classes and let control over what should be norms. And a lot of times, like with their breakout room norms and expectations, or if I do other norms and expectations have this, it's not that different from what I've done, but now they've established it. So they have control over it. Um, and it's, it's a little bit more engaging. They're a little bit more responsible for it. Um, along with that, I also want to show you another easy way that I have student input in here. 
Um, and one of the things I, again, started doing last year and have continued on this year is like their weekly reflections. It's changed slightly from what I had from distance learning, but this part here has remained and it's the best part that I could have added in. So I am their digital notebook that I have them do. I just added in a notes. And so this is totally optional. So is there anything you would like me to know? And then they can share stuff with me. So I get song suggestions this way or book suggestions or TikToks. Um, I've been getting a lot of memes this year about classes of like, just like, I didn't know the test was doing today. Um, so a lot of like funny, like memes that have been put in here. And this is such a great way to connect with them. Um, I, I just love it so much. A lot of times they won't put anything or say, no, not today. But then sometimes I get really um, good notes about like, hey, this is what's happening with me this week. And just so to let you know, or like, I'm not really feeling well, um, or like, you know, I'm not like, you know, and there's a lot about mental health this year um, and just talking about being really stressed out. So then I can use that and I can guide my classes. Okay. Like we need to do a little bit more mindful moments or have them like a little bit of breaks or maybe play a little bit more games next week. Um, and that's been really helpful or just, you know, like I get a lot of like, have a great weekend, <laughs> which is really, really great. Or sometimes even like, I really enjoy this class, which, you know, is always a feel good booster for me too. So sometimes I, it's really good for me too. Um, and then looking at the TikToks or whatever they want to share, just some funny things. Again, another way to connect, they can always add to the playlist. This is a great way where they can continually to suggest songs to me without like having another place or like, I don't know, being awkward about it. They can just put it here. I've gotten a lot of book recommendations. Um, and then also here, um, students share artwork and things. And that's been so awesome. So we'll oftentimes get pictures of their pets. And then um, if they have any artwork they're really proud of, they'll oftentimes show it here. And it's just a really great way to kind of get to know your students on a deeper level with like kind of that filter removed. So they don't have to like, you know, come up to you and like show you or like, I don't know, sometimes they can be really awkward in person, but this is just a really great way for them to get to know you. And so it's one of the best things that I could have done. And um, I'm going to keep doing it for, for, as a, for a long time. <laughs> but um, you can do these on the end of any assignments. Again, I have like weekly reflections I have to do. I have them reflect all the time, but you can add these pretty much anywhere or even, you know, I, I don't know. I just have it on the end of an assignment your weekly reflections. So these are really easy to add on to like any documents that you're doing, like especially like Friday type documents or anything like that you can add in. All right, going back to our student voice here. Um, the other things is just how, what are you doing with the work? So having that student voice, um, really like I want to amplify my student voice. I want to showcase why it's important. And so um, a couple of ways that I would do this is um, using e-portfolios, those digital portfolios, using a class website, having family showcases or digital gallery walks so that other people are viewing their work. So um, I have a class website that I share with parents and students, and I'll put up some of their work, um, you know, especially if we're doing like more artsy or like the more creative type of projects, I'll put that up there um, so that they can see that or if there's like any like major projects going on, I'll put on the website too, to showcase their work. And then also their e-portfolios. We do do e-portfolios um, that they start from freshman year. I continue on for this year, but one of my assignments, um, usually at the semesters is a family showcase. So they, I do this for Flipgood and they have to present their e-portfolio to a family member. Um, and I use the term family pretty loosely because I know not you know, families can have, be a wide range. So pretty like to a family member. So um, this is really great because if they're, you know, showcasing it to their parents, their parents are getting a clue in, um, especially what they're proud of, what they've been working on. But if, like if they're showing it to their little sibling too, they're making that connection with their sibling and they're showing like, this is what high school is like. And like, this is what I'm proud of and having those conversations. And so um, really trying to like show their voice and show off the work that they're doing and showcasing that work in some other way. So these are um, just some tips that I use. If you have any tips that you use in your classroom that you would like to add, please add them into the comments down below. And I hope you have. Fun.